my name is Adam. Welcome to All Things Electric Guitar Tone here at theworshipinitiative.com. If you've listened really to any of the last couple of Worship Initiative records, uh, the things that uh, you've heard have probably come from uh, this pedal board and these guitars that you see and uh, this amp. And so hopefully today, uh, what we'll go over will be just an overview of the sounds that I use here uh, for the projects that we're doing and when I play live and um, that you can take some of the principles and things that we'll talk about briefly in this video and then more in depth in the videos to come and then apply those things to your setup and, and your gear that you have um, at your church and with your team. And so um, to start, we'll just talk about guitars and then go quickly to the amp and then look at pedals and discuss uh, settings and the like. And so this uh, guitar here is my mainstay guitar that I use for most things. It's a Gretsch uh, Country Classic based off a of Gretsch Country Gentleman. It's a full hollow body uh, guitar, so no center block running down the middle. And it's very large, uh, but I, it just sounds really great. It's got um, the Filtertron pickups from Gretsch that um, Gretsch is known for, just uh, really chimey, really full bodied, just sounds great. Um, so I use that guitar mainly, and then I also use uh, this Telecaster and this Gibson SG uh, that I have behind me just for various uh, sounds, but this certainly um, is the main guitar that I use. It doesn't have a tone knob, is an interesting thing about it. It just has a tone switch. So this switch here um, functions really similar to, to a tone knob. So down is like if your tone knob's halfway up, fully up is like your tone knob's all the way off. And I'll talk more about how I use that when we get into pad sounds and swells and things like that. But just so when you see me messing with this, um, you'll know what that is. Uh, moving over to the amp, this is a somewhat new addition to um, our arsenal here at Worship Initiative. This is a Kemper profiler. You're probably aware of them if you've spent any time on YouTube looking at gear or reading forums or anything. So it's just an amp uh, modeler. You are able to capture samples or purchase samples of uh, amps that you love to use or could not ever afford to use, which is what I do. Um, and so the setting that I use mainly um, on this is um, a matchless DC30 setting. Um, using the EF86 channel of that. Um, and we'll talk more just about how I have that set as we get into to pedals and tones, but it's really just set um, to be uh, just right on the edge of, of breaking up. Um, so not distorted, but not just crystal clean either. So this is with no, no pedals on, kind of how that, that setting um, on this amp sounds, so. So you can hear uh, from, from Go that it's pretty full bodied, it's got enough uh, clarity to cut through a mix but not uh, thin or tinny, and that if I strum really hard that you're going to hear some distortion. So you're going to hear it start to break up a little bit, but if I'm picking real lightly then it stays clean and it stays, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't go into to break up at all. And so I like that because it, I'm able to to get more colors from the amp than if I set it really dirty or if I set it really clean. Um, and so the settings on it, every, the treble's up just a little bit, the mids are basically flat and so, are, so is the bass. So everything's basically um, almost at noon. The volume, the gain is just a little bit below noon. Um, and so that's the amp. Moving to, to pedals, um, I'll just walk you through the order that I have things in and then how I have them set. So my, my, from my guitar, I go into what's called a Goodwood Audio Underfacer. It's just a, a junction box, an interface um, for my board. So all of my ins and outs are coming out of one spot on my pedal board. Um, it's got a mono sum button so that my pedal board that's wired stereo, um, I can just quickly sum it to mono rather than having to unplug patch cables to make stereo pedals uh, hear things in mono. And then it's got a couple of other, like a mute button and a ground lift and things like that. So out of that interface, it goes straight into this Keeley uh, Compressor Pro. And so you can look, I think we've got a camera that we'll cut to that will show you the settings. The, the level is right at noon, the tone knob is right at noon. Um, and then I have the compression settings set really low. And so the blend is almost all the way off and the, 
the sustain is up just a little bit. So I use this um, just to get a little bit more sustain out of my compressor, out of my sound, out of the guitar, and then uh, to level out some of the volume spikes. And so here's, I'll play just on the bridge pickup without the compressor, and then I'll kick it on and hopefully you can hear the difference. So you can hear off the bat, it's set a little quieter um, than without it on. But that's also partially that it's grabbing some of those high um, volume areas and, and bringing them back down and kind of leveling out uh, my signal. And so that's really what a compressor does. It takes your quiets and makes them a little louder, takes your louds and makes them a little quieter. So you're reducing your dynamic range a little bit, but that's why I have this one set um, so mild because I don't want to just squash the life out of it. And so I leave that always on. Um, it's just, I like what it does to my sound. Especially on cleaner stuff, it just helps those notes ring out a little bit more. Um, and so moving uh, from the compressor, we go into uh, all the way down to this uh, Electro Harmonics Micro Pog. Um, it's an octave pedal, octave up, octave down, and you can blend between them. I have it set, um, that's about how I have it set. The sub octave's just a little below noon, the high octave's just a little bit above. I don't use this a ton. I sometimes throw it on when I'm doing a big like single note lead line um, and sometimes for swells, but um, I'll just play those settings for you and then you can hear how they sound. So here's without it. And so an example of maybe a sound that I'd use that on, if you're familiar with Phil Wickham's song Cannons, which we have um, on the Worship Initiative library, um, it's great for that lead line. I'll make use kind of the sound that I do there. So I'm turning on my overdrive and a, a boost pedal with the, the micro pog. It just lacks some of the energy that, that I wanted in that moment. And so the, the Micropog's great for that. Uh, moving out of the Micropog, I go next into this uh, Rocket Pedals Archer. It's kind of a Klon clone. Um, if you're familiar with Klons, it's just volume, gain, and a treble knob, kind of a tone knob. And so I have this set pretty mild. All of my drives, you'll notice the drive knobs are pretty low. And I use them more as kind of colored boosts with a little bit of dirt than I do just like a full-on overdrive distortion because I like getting the overdrive mainly from my amp. And so using them as boosts that are adding just a little bit of dirt helps me get more of the character of the amp rather than just, oh, I'm adding overdrive from a pedal. So here's uh, without uh, the Archer how my sound is. <laughs> And so you can hear it's adding a little bit of mid-range, a little bit of body, and then just a little bit more volume and just a little bit more saturation on my sound. Um, so you'll notice I'm going to end up stacking things a lot rather than just using pedals, overdrives, and distortions separately from each other and standalone. Um, so that's the Archer. The next pedal is the Full Tone Full Drive 3. I love this because they made it to where the boost and the overdrive section are independent of each other, which is a new thing for the full drive three. So it's really getting two pedals in one box and they made it smaller. So it's really great. So I have this set um, with the volume right about noon, a little less. The tone knob on these pedals is tricky. It's a very dark pedal. So I have the tone knob almost all the way up. And then I use it on the wide asymmetrical setting, which is basically just a less colored, less mid-forward um, color section. So here's without um, that, that pedal. And with it. And 
And so that to me just feels a little more, even though it's a less mid forward sound than the other ones on this pedal, other settings, it's still more throaty and more rock and roll mid heavy. And so um, I use that and stack it a lot with the boost. <laughs> And so that's a great, um, I use that for big lead lines and I use it for chords. It's just a great all-purpose sound. And then the boost on its own um, is just a clean boost. It makes your sound louder. They don't really need explanations, but. So that's a pretty just transparent, bright boost. Just more, more volume of what you're already putting into it. Uh, the next pedal in my chain is this Exotic Effects EP Booster. It's another just boost pedal, but it's a lot more colored than the boost on the full drive. And so it's just darker and takes a little more top end off. So here's without. So you can hear too if you're listening on good speakers and it's actually adding a little bit of low end into the signal as well, which is great with some of these mid boosty kind of pedals that make it feel like you're losing low end. You can kind of add some of that back in um, with this pedal. And so I use these two together a lot, the Archer and the EP Booster. So an example of that would be maybe the intro of Lion and the Lamb, uh, which is a, a song in the, the Worship Initiative Library. So I'll walk through delays too later, but here's kind of how I play that um, with these sounds in particular. And so because I'm playing higher up on the neck and not as many like lower frequencies, I like having some of that low body added back in from the EP booster. And so that's kind of my drive section, um, the Archer into the Full Drive 3 into the EP Booster. It's kind of everything I need, two different colors of overdrives, two different colors of boosts, and I can stack them uh, as needed. Um, from there, I move just out into my Ernie Ball VP Junior. Um, I run my volume pedal after my drives because when I'm doing volume swells, I like to have overdrive on. And if your overdrive pedals are after your volume pedal, then your volume pedal is basically acting somewhat as a gain knob. And so you'll hear the swell get dirtier as you turn your volume pedal up because you're hitting the front end of your pedals harder. And so I like just having the sound be what it is going into my overdrive pedals and then being uh, able to treat my volume pedal more like a master volume for my drives rather than a preamp control. And so here's an example of that. Um, you can hear it's dirty even when the volume pedal's barely on. And so if that was if that was before the drives, it would be really clean. And then as I turned the volume pedal up, the sound would get more and more dirty. Um, and so from the volume pedal, I go into uh, this full tone Supa trim. It's just a tremolo pedal. It's got the big knobs so that you can adjust it with your feet. Um, it just sounds like a tremolo, nothing special. And so there are songs that I'll use this on. I'm thinking of songs like Greater You Lord, anything that's more open and kind of vibey. I'll use a, a tremolo on every now and then with some reverb and just a touch of delay. Um, yeah, from the Supa trim, I go into this TC Electronic uh, Stereo Chorus and Flanger. I don't use the flanger. I don't use uh, the pitch modulation setting on it much either, uh, but it's just a really great sounding chorus pedal. And so I use that um, a lot when I'm doing more ambient sounds, pad sounds, and then with songs that are newer now, um, things like Phil Wickham's new tunes, anything that's kind of got the like 80s pop kind of vibe, the chorus pedal is really great uh, for that. But I'll just give you an example of kind of what that sounds like. So here's without it. And 
here's with it. Um, so that pedal is just really great. It, I love pitch modulation effects. It, it adds some sonic interest and some cool color without having to play more notes to make things interesting. And so that's something in worship settings that I'm always thinking about is how can I do something that's really musically interesting, but that's not super noty so that I'm not distracting or overplaying. And so using effects like uh, chorus and what will be next in the chain, the vibrato pedal, um, helps add some of that color and kind of cool vibe without just playing a ton of notes all the time. And so that's how I use uh, my chorus pedal. The next pedal I probably use too much, but I just love the way it sounds and it's it's just really fun. And so this is the new uh, reissue of the Boss VB2 vibrato pedal. And so you've heard this if you've listened to anything uh, that Phil Wickham has put out. Um, this kind of sound is on a lot of what he does and um, has sort of influenced a lot of my playing and so a lot of what I'm doing here on Worship Initiative Records is, is using this kind of sound. And so you've heard this on uh, like tunes like Your Love Awakens Me, uh, the Phil Wickham tune. So um, I'll give you an example of kind of how I do that sound. So I'll play it without, and then I'll add it back in, and you'll hear it's just not as interesting without it. Um, so here's without. So it's adding just a little bit more color and more just sonic interest. And so that, that pedal in particular, I use a lot when it comes to lead lines and, and I'll show you too with kind of volume swells and um, things like that. So that's, that's the vibrato pedal. So moving out of that, we go into this Strymon uh, El Capistan. Uh, I spent more money on it than I should if for just how I'm using it, but I use it as just a 16th note slap back that I can change the tempo on because it has a tap tempo switch. So. So I'll use that on maybe a song like uh, Lion and the Lamb that I mentioned earlier. It's got, and I'll use the vibrato on that, that song as well. So in the verses, it's just got a kind of pulsy guitar line. So I like the 16th note delay because it's, it's adding a little bit of space and a little bit of uh, interest without adding any sort of like syncopated rhythm like a dotted eighth or something maybe would to uh, what's happening in guitar land. And so that's just a cool way to add interest without adding clutter. So delays can really quickly, uh, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, add a lot of color if you use too much of it and just make things too noisy and too cluttered. So, um, but in terms of the L cap, I just use it as a slapback 16th note delay. Uh, moving next into the Strymon timeline, um, this can do is just a delay machine that can do anything you want it to. And the way I have it set up um, it, with banks, I don't usually make individual song presets. I just use the global tap tempo and change the sounds. Um, I just and choose different sounds. So my bank zero is just different pad sounds. So I've got. <laughs> that I'll use with a long reverb to get kind of a pad sound. Um, and then I have just a really long tape delay. So a lot of repeats. I have the filter pretty dark. Um, and then this is when I start to use my tone knobs that I mentioned, or tone switch that I mentioned earlier. I do my swells usually on my bridge pickup because it's not going to have as much low end. 
uh, but it's going to be really bright. So then I turn my tone knob all the way down. So my pad sounds are really nasally and kind of narrow in terms of frequency range, but they, they don't stick out and they just add a good warmth. And so here's, here's my pad sound that I use a lot and I'll add a reverb on, on there as well. And then I'll kick on the L cap as well sometimes just to add a little bit more length to some delays. And then I love when swells get kind of hairy and kind of dirty, so I'll even kick on a full drive with swells sometimes as well. And so that's kind of how I do pads. I like uh, a little bit of overdrive and I like them really dark with not a lot of, of low end frequencies because that'll cause things to get really muddy and kind of woofy. And you start to kind of step on typically where like a keyboard player's pads are, are living. And so I'm able to think kind of conscientiously about what everyone else is doing in the mix and uh, setting pad sounds that way helps me carve out a distinct space for guitars rather than just trying to cover the, the entirety of the frequency spectrum. Uh, so moving on with the timeline, the way I have these set, bank, uh, well, button A is always, for my single delays, an eighth note. And button B is always a dotted eighth note. And then banks one, two, and three are just varying, uh, like bank one is long, bank two is medium, bank three is short. So I have a long eighth and a long dotted. Bank two, a medium eighth and a medium dotted eighth bank three, a short eighth and a short dotted. And so what that allows me to do is just think more um, in the moment in terms of what sound I wanna do. And then also when I'm uh, recording something or if Shane says, hey, can you do this part or I had this idea, I have those kinds of sounds readily accessible. And so I just have a long eighth note. And then a long dotted. So here's with that eighth note. Dotted eighth. And then the exact same sounds, but with the mix turned down a little bit and the feedback turned down a little bit. So it's just a less intense version of what I already had. And then bank three is the exact same thing. They're mislabeled on the actual pedal, but I just know what they are. But so it's shorter eight with the mix really quiet and a short dotted. And then bank four is when I get into dual delays. I use pretty exclusively. Um, if I'm using the dual delay on the timeline, a dotted eighth note and an eighth note. So it sounds like this, this is the rhythm. So that sound is really great on, I used it earlier when I played that line in the lamb lead line. So I'll use that as an example here. And so I like it because it's adding some rhythm, it's adding some sort of ping-pongy uh, dynamics to what's happening, but I have kept the mix and the feedbacks low enough to where it's not gonna get really cluttered. So I'll, I'll actually turn those up too much to kind of give an example of what to look out for if you're using uh, delays. So here's with the mix uh, really high on both of those. And so for me here, as I listen, that just feels like there's way too much happening. I like the rhythm that it's adding, but they're mixed too high. And so you kind of lose the distinction of what the notes actually are that are most important. And instead it just becomes a wash of too many notes. And so that's something to look out for when using uh, dual delays. And so I've got 
bank four as my long dual delays, bank five as my shorter dual delays. And then I have bank six as my reverse delay sounds. I have one as a quarter note, one as an eighth note. Nothing too crazy there. I'll use them for pads with a really long reverb sometimes and like a modulation. Here's an example. So I like the reverb with that because it gets rid of some of the uh, like herky-jerky nature of reverse delays if you listen without the reverb. It can get a little... You kind of lose some, some of the smoothness and so having a reverb on there to kind of blend it all together feels really great. Um, and that's pretty much, in terms of live sounds, what I'm using on the timeline. Moving over to the big sky, I have a similar sort of philosophy with uh, the way the banks are set up. Um, button A is usually a shorter reverb. Button B is usually a little bit longer. And button C is an even longer delay still. And so that way I'm not having to scroll banks a ton if I, if I can avoid it. I'm able to just have three sounds that I know I can get to and each bank has somewhat of a different flavor of long, medium, and short. And so I tend to use the cloud setting if I'm doing uh, big pads. Um, I just like the, the washiness of it. Um, and then I, I use room reverbs typically for my shorter stuff. And so in terms of uh, sounds, that's kind of how I use all of my pedals. I gave some examples already of, of how I use my overdrives, how I use the POG, how I tend to use my modulation effects, and then uh, a main question that I get asked a lot is about pad sounds, and so I've kind of showed you that, but I'll use a long, uh, a long eighth note, and then I'll add in the sixteenth note. So here's what those two things together do. So that's just the eighth note, and then add in the sixteenth. And so those two things added with a, a longer reverb. So it allows me to, if I want to get picky, I can and it doesn't get too uh, washy and kind of lose control, but if I want to go into the more volume swell land, I can kick on um, the overdrive and a, a boost for some color and then the vibrato pedal to add some modulation. And so that's, that's basically it in terms of how I use certain sounds, how I use the pedals um, that I have. In the videos uh, to come in this series, we'll dive a little bit more into different types of overdrives, different types of delays, different types of reverbs, and how maybe a little more in-depth to use those. Uh, but in terms of what I'm using here for Worship Initiative Records and, and when we go and play songs out live, um, these are the guitars. This is the amp uh, that I'm using. And so be sure uh, to be on the lookout or check out below the, the videos um, that dive more in depth into these pedals and check out all the other uh, music training and heart training resources that we have at theworshipinitiative.com. Thanks. Yeah.